In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighbourhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together Together we're we're Absolute Absolute Dogs. Dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Welcome to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that teaches you how to be the very best dog owner your dog could ever wish for. Now, there are times that you maybe don't feel like the best dog owner that your dog could ever wish for. And actually, there are maybe even times that you feel like you're a good dog owner and you just wish you didn't have that dog right now. Um, And I certainly came up against that. I came up a cropper against that only a couple of weeks ago, eight month old Border Collie pup. Her name is Nifty. She can be quite nifty, quite slippery, quite fast. We were training in the paddock. Everything was going well. It looked fantastic. We were doing some little lines of uh, racing down to a dead toy. And there were a lot of sheep on the other side of the fence, Tom. There are a lot of sheep. Maybe, I don't know, 200 sheep, 300 sheep, a lot of sheep. And they are very well fenced. We've got um, stock fencing and and big deer fencing, actually. So it's brilliant fencing uh, for the site for, for when we're training and training dogs. And... In that moment, she ran down, she grabbed her toy and a sheep decided to dart. Now, I could be blaming the sheep, but actually Nifty thought that that was quite fun. And she carried on, she took her toy and she ran all the way along that fence line and all the way back. And when I asked her if she fancied recalling, I did a Nifty. She said, no, thank you. In fact, I don't think she said no, thank you. I think it was much ruder than that. In fact, I don't know if she heard me because she was very, very uh, into the moment of of running up and down the fence line. Now. But anyone who has a dog who's ever chased stock or a little critter or a rat, a mouse, a bird, a cat, you know what, whatever your dog is chasing, because you could replace those sheep with anything your dog chases, yeah. in that moment, you can feel a little bit stupid. You can feel a little bit incompetent. You can feel like you let your dog down. You can feel like you let yourself down. You can feel like you let the farm down. You can feel pretty terrible. Let's be honest, feeling terrible isn't going to get us where we need to feel. And right? we're all, all too familiar with that moment where actually our dog, you know that your dog is gone. You know, far, that they, you know that they are not going to be responsive. You know that you can recall them. They're not going to come and you recall them anyway, but it's kind of like a half-hearted recall because you're like, I don't think this is going to work and it doesn't work. It's like the red mist has come down. You guys might be nodding your head saying, yes, I've heard this. I've been there. I know exactly what this is about. I've seen this this red mist has come down the curtains closed you know what there is no airspace for you you're and, not going to be heard and the first thing to say on this is that actually we can go away from that feeling like oh my goodness it's all gone wrong i'm a terrible dog owner but the reality is it's just information and i think that you know we've got to say like a word of warning here that we're 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 kind of making it sound not as kind of serious as it is because the human brain kind of makes things very very serious and very very catastrophic it's just information and we can do something and about it. Of course, nobody wants their dog to ever go looking at stock or cats or birds or rats or unless it's intentional. You know what? For us, it's just absolutely not something we need. No, Nifty is not a sheepdog for those of you that are wondering. She is a border collie, of course. She is absolutely not intended for working sheep. I'm not saying we never would. What I'm saying is in that moment, I did not intend her to go for her to go along that fence line yeah. and of course it is serious however just like tom said it is also information and for me in that moment 10 15 years ago i think i'd have been a hot mess about that situation i think i would have been having mild panic attacks palpitations maybe a meltdown instead what i did was i said huh isn't that interesting and uh, kind of like sort of hmm to myself uh, looked around just to see uh, what the best scenario was. It, it, what, what should I do? How should I play it out? And I am going to tell you what I did because I can hear you now going, what on earth do you do in that moment? What I did in that moment, and I'm not necessarily proud of it. However, it needed to happen. I did really pretty much rugby tackle Nifty. So I ran towards the fence line. She wasn't going to come back. The recall was not there. She was absolutely gone in a world of her own, which was absolutely, you could see she was fast. She was fun. She was having a whale of a time up and down the fence line and she was stuck. 
She was absolutely stuck. And when I say rugby tackled her, I kind of just got her out of that situation as fast as I could. And she was, I mean, her eyes were bright. Her tail was bushy. She was so excited by the whole thing. And I was, let's remove Nifty. Let's take her home. Let's pop her in the puppy pen. She has a drink. I have a drink. And no, it wasn't a stiff one, but it probably needed to be. And I just rethink this because in yeah. that moment, there's not a lot of training that can happen. Of course, you could try again. Of course, you could set them up to do the same thing. It's going to happen again. It's not going to go away. And you definitely yeah. aren't going to make headway in that moment. And so first things first, be careful about what situations you put your dog in because some information gathering exercises are going to end badly. And, and so I think it is one of those things, right, Tom, though, that you, you might assess something and it might yeah. still go wrong. Like it might still. So, so for example, you, your dog might have seen sheep 50 times and not chase them. But actually in that day, they may chase them that in that, that moment to so assess the situation, yeah. but it can change. Yeah, absolutely. And so be smart about where you put your dog, be smart about what situations you put them in and be, be aware of the tools that you've got in terms of actually they can be on lead. They can be on a long line. There can be a fence between them and whatever it is that, that might be tempting them and be really careful. Cause I think sometimes, you know, in, in that situation, Nifty's not meaning to be difficult or cause harm or, or, but, you know, because of her behavior, she could have done if there was not a fence, right? And so what wouldn't have happened is there would, we wouldn't be in a situation where there would be no fence. She's scaring the sheep, the farmer's getting really angry. And ultimately it would be our fault in that situation. And so get the information, be aware of the information. Get them out of there as quickly as possible. And then it's what we do with that information that matters next. And remember that every time you take your dog into a situation, things can be different. So you might have been in that situation 100 times. Yeah. I've been in that field every day since Nifty's been born, pretty much. Like I've been there every single day. Yeah. That field scenario may change. For example, the farmer might have moved their sheep or the sheep might move just at that wrong moment or yeah. for Nifty the right moment. You know what? Things change all the time. So you are assessing all the time your dog. You're assessing. And in fact, for young dogs, the, to up to a certain age, we don't. their eyesight might, might not be fully developed. So, you know, it might be that you take your 10-week-old puppy on a walk and they're perfectly behaved. You take your 12-week-old puppy on a walk and they are into everything. And that's because they can now see it and focus on it and be aware of it. And that information is, oh, interesting. Now they see all these things and I get to work through them. So I guess what we need to think about is what would be the reaction to that information? What plan would we put in place based on discovering that our dogs are very stimulated by the movement of sheep, for example? So first things first, for Nifty, she no longer goes into that field. Mm -hmm. And the reason she no longer goes into that field is at the moment, those sheep are there mm -hmm. and they're alongside that fence line. So we're very, very lucky at Bowerland. We have multi different options to where we can take her out to exercise or to train or to uh, take her to the toilet. And that is no longer one of her options. Yeah. She is also not given any off lead opportunity in on the site and actually yeah. beforehand tom she had the whole site to exercise on yeah. once the gate shut at about seven o'clock i would let her loose and i didn't really think twice about it because i'd never seen her say no to me and i'd never seen her not come back and so for me as soon as i had that information and that yeah. isn't never that is right now the possibly the next one month two months three months six months i don't know we'll see how we go she does not get free off leash opportunities those yeah. have been removed Next thing would be actually maybe the success of the sheep and the success of the sheep in kind of engaging Nifty. Maybe that leaves some clues. And maybe, you know, she got very stimulated by the fact that the sheep was very, was very still and then sprinted off, moved, right, dashed away. And that caught her attention. And so actually at this point, we'd be thinking, we could incorporate that into the way that we interact with Nifty. Maybe we could um, play with her a little bit kind of static and then we could dash away or we could animate the toy in a sheep-like way. And in the, in the most interesting, um, I suppose, sense for me, in that moment when it went wrong, I felt like I could have dashed. I felt like I could have played with toys. Yeah. I felt like I could do everything. And this is the important thing for you to know. In that moment, that's the wrong time. Yeah. Like Tom said, all of those things are things you might want to incorporate in your play away from that situation yeah, build and i think that's something that you you sort of realize how much chase is important to certain dogs uh, and for nifty it's very very important some of yeah. you might have seen nifty in uh, the nifty badge part of the training academy yeah. 
we share all of this and it's definitely warts and all. We're going to literally not hide things that actually, I did think about it for a minute. I was like, God, do I, do you even admit to stuff like this? Because you're a dog trainer and your dog just went alongside a, a fence, of course, but at the same time chasing sheep. And so for me, that information, um, yes, let's chase, let's get her driving, let's get her playing harder on toys, let's get her more um, uh, movement stimulated by us away from that scenario. Yeah, exactly. And, and be, be aware of what the real villain is here, right? The real villain is not the sheep, yeah? It's not sheep that we need to work on. We don't need to capture a sheep and use that as a training tool. Actually, the villain here is the... And Nifty's very stimulated by movement, right? And that, so she needs the skill of disengaging from movement, being, being around moving environments and actually engaging with us first. And that gives you all of a sudden, instead of one option of capture the sheep, lure them into your house and use them as a training tool. Actually, we've got thousands of different ways that we can train this, environments we can take them to, things that we can um, kind of expose her to in a gradual way and still keep her engaged and, and animated with us. So with that in mind, another thing that Nifty's had as part of, uh, it was a real like, it was quite a pivotal moment for me. It was a moment of, right, things need to change here. Uh, she uh, has a harness and a head collar. And so she wears a harness, double lead head collar. Now, whether you're um, for or against um, other um, ways of walking, like for me, the head collar guides her head when uh, she wants to go into chase drive. And so actually I've just got a little bit more steering. So I've got a fraction more sort of power steering when, when those things potentially are an issue. And the harness allows me a little bit more um, leverage and control. And so that double lead effectively gives me a dog. Whereas sometimes at the end of a collar, I think she could possibly damage herself because she is quite chase driven. Uh, and so for me, for literally that day onwards, Nifty had a new harness, a new double lead and a new head collar. And, and none of those things before were part of her toolkit. She was often on a collar. And 99% of the time, she's pretty good. But I've now got a little bit more toolkit uh, to work with and to play with. And like I said, she's not off lead in that scenario. She's off lead in lots of other scenarios, not in that scenario. Uh, and she will be off lead in that scenario again, just not right now. But the head collar harness uh, double lead scenario has probably become part of her toolkit since that day. Next thing would be thinking actually about, are they rehearsing this in other areas? So, you know, if I were to think about uh, like Casino, my young colleague, about one year old, um, if, if, and she hasn't yet, but I did, one day I will get this information. And she, you know, one day she might chase something or try and chase something. And I would look at her life and I would think, actually, you know what? I let her race and chase my other dogs quite a lot because that's how, you know, they like to interact with each other in that way. And so that would be one thing that I think actually before I can get her to, you know, truly disengage from that and, you know, get her not to do that when the other dogs are running around, probably she can't be part of that activity right now until she's got the skills. And just like Tom said there, like assessing what it is that your dog is rehearsing. So for me, another one that Nifty was rehearsing was uh, she was in the garden looking at birds. Mm -hmm. And so I had to sort of take away the garden as well. And so it might sound really tough, but actually I have taken away free access to the garden because she is chasing birds in the garden. And just like Tom said, you might actually say, okay, uh, Nifty doesn't get to chase other dogs because I'm pretty sure she'd be uh, pretty nifty at it. So she doesn't chase other dogs. But those are things that I might just look at and say, am I going to give you access to doing those? And actually, Nifty doesn't have access to chasing dogs. She doesn't have access to looking at birds in the garden and she doesn't have access to the sheep line. She is also uh, fairly in, in the house. She's fairly... A gated community because she would very quickly work another dog in the house so she'll make them move by just nudging them she's nudging or she's watching or any movement is very stimulating for her so movement is something we've really had to work on uh, but also observing uh, what movement is um, yeah. sort of ticking all her boxes really yeah absolutely and then I guess the final thing is thinking you know with, 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 any, with any behavior struggle whether you've got a dog that you've discovered has given you the information that they like to chase things or, or whether it's that they're unpredictable with other dogs or maybe they're barking at passers-by from the living room window actually taking a step back and saying what skills could I teach my dog that would result in them not struggling with that maybe it's some level of impulse control so nifty for example we have really really ramped up uh, magic hand we've really really ramped up um uh, middle uh, because those were already okay but in the face of chase they were not there uh, and then also and um, from a point of self-control actually toy switch so she can disengage yeah. from one activity and go to another and only this weekend i had her out at about a, a big agility show she's toy switching all around the rings interestingly she's never looked at an agility dog 
no idea why she doesn't think agility dogs are movement like she hasn't clocked that which i'm grateful for because realistically she's going to be around that way more than she'll be around sheep however uh, all of these things are skill ups in those environments yeah absolutely so taking that step back saying i've now got this information i can identify what skills would probably help me out in these situations a little bit and i know the games that can teach those skills right and so whether it be that you're working through the sexier than a squirrel challenge, whether it be that you're one of our amazing training academy students, which is like the Netflix of dog training, whether it be you're going through the pro dog trainer program to learn how to train your dog like a pro and train other people's dogs like a pro. That sequence of events, information, step back, what skills do I need? Right, here are the games to play, let's play them. That is the sequence of transformation, regardless of the struggle. And if you are thinking, oh my goodness, I want to see more of this. I want to do more of this. I want to be part of more of this. Whether it's Sex and the Squirrel you come in at, whether it is the training academy where we have our Netflix of dog training and the Nifty Solutions badge, which actually shows you this and goes through this and, and we show you the videos and we show you how we're getting the results and actually how the lifestyle has changed yeah. growing up with a puppy and growing up with a puppy who's definitely presenting and throwing in a few little challenges and saying so you want to be a dog trainer i'll show you being a dog trainer uh, the thing is that is where we we, we are going to give you the inside story you get to see it all uh, and whether that's for your own dog or whether that's for other people's dogs we absolutely know that you need to see it warts and all absolutely so with that guys that is the secret to transforming any behavior struggle it's that simple um we'll see you next week in the next episode in the meantime remember stay, stay sexy, sexy.